All right, hello everybody. Uh, this is Test Before Production, where I'm going to introduce Z-Test, a unit testing framework for Zeek. I'm Ryan Victory. Uh, a little bit about me. I am a data nerd. I'm very passionate about data analytics, cybersecurity, and computer programming, which makes for a great combo, I think, for somebody who's into Zeek. Uh, I currently manage an engineering team at Corelight. And before that, I managed a hunting team, and I was also a hunter at a financial institution. Uh, also, while I was there, uh, architected and developed a real-time wire fraud detection system, and generally just have spent my time working to punch miscreants. Uh, my email address, GitHub, and Twitter are there. I don't tweet all that much, but feel free to follow me or check out some of the code that I've got on GitHub. So the goal of this talk is to introduce the concept of unit testing for those of you that maybe aren't familiar with unit testing. But specifically, I want to look at Zeek scripts. Uh, and through that, I'm going to introduce a framework uh, called Z-Test, which will help make Zeek unit testing a little bit easier. Uh, and I want you to really walk away thinking about how you test your Zeek scripts today and how you could test them even more tomorrow. Uh, one key thing, though, I'm not really going to be able to teach you everything about unit testing today. That's a whole conference worth of material, and many books have been written about it. I only have 20 minutes. So I want to get you starting to think about ways that you can test your scripts. Because one really key thing that I think is important is when we think about the organizations that we protect using Zeek, uh, you think about your public facing website, you think about your applications that your company uses or your customers use, the, the, the processes for testing and changing things are, are, are rigid usually. Um, oftentimes, though, the thing that's monitoring them, Zeek, uh, we're not testing maybe at the same level that some of those other things are. And it's, it's important because we're, we're protecting the organization, protecting whatever it is it's important to us so the problem uh, is testing zeke scripts and zeke as you know is largely traffic and packet driven in most cases the way to get data into zeke is through some kind of a packet uh, whether that's a, a network interface or a pcap so when we're writing tests we are often going to use packet capture files or pcaps to test those but there are some problems with that approach uh, for example, what if you have you don't have a PCAP that covers all of the branches of code that you have? Uh, let's say that you're working on a new zero-day exploit detector. You might not have a packet capture file yet that actually triggers your detector. So you need to have a way to test your logic in your code without that PCAP. And I understand that you can use things like Scapy to, to manufacture uh, PCAP files that meet the criteria, but that is extra work that you have to do uh, in order to actually test all of your code. Also, when we talk about unit testing, we're going to talk about different branches of your code uh, and all of the different control flow paths that can be taken. Um, as you get to be have more complex logic, you need a lot more traffic in that PCAP to test every single part of your code. Uh, also, what if you need a really large PCAP? Maybe your detector requires a long uh, uh, trace file with a lot of different traffic. Uh, maybe we can find a way to test that without having to have this giant PCAP uh, around. Also, a lot of times your detector might rely on finding sensitive or malicious uh, data. We, we don't necessarily want to have a PCAP of that data where somebody could pick it up out of a, a repo or take a look at it or potentially have something malicious happen in your network. And finally, maybe that script is designed to only work on data that shows up in your production environment. You can't even take a, pa a pack capture of it. So all of these things are definite problems when, when testing Zeek. And, and that's really why I want to talk about unit testing. It's a way to try to help alleviate some of these problems. So let me just talk for a minute about maybe this is your workflow. And, we'll, and I'll be honest, this is most people's workflow, I think. So you've decided, hey, I want to write a Zeek script to detect something or to collect some information. So you start out with that decision point. Then you decide, OK, I'm going to run it locally on my machine or maybe in a vm or a docker image but i'm going to run it against a packet capture file or maybe a local interface and then usually i'm going to find out it doesn't work if you're like me you're going to try about four times before the zeke interpreter actually says that your code is even valid so uh you're going to find out it doesn't work you're going to fix it you're going to try it again so you go into this cycle of local testing uh fixing local testing fixing until you get to this point where you say it works well really what you should be saying is i think it works uh, because I uh, probably won't know until you have real traffic. So you're going to end up sending it to a sensor. And uh, if you're really lucky, 
and, and you might have a dev environment or QA environment that you're going to send that traffic or that, that script to. Um, if you're not so lucky, you're going to go just deploy it on a production sensor. And then you're probably going to look to make sure that Zeek is still running. You're going to look at your logs to make sure that either you're seeing output from your detector that you expected, or you're not seeing any output because you're not having any malicious traffic. And then once again, you're going to say it works. But what you should be saying is probably, I think it works. Um, because inevitably, at least for me, what ends up happening is some hours, days, weeks, months later, uh, you come back to your sensor and go, wait, I had an event that my script was supposed to detect and uh, it didn't. Or even worse, you come to your sensor and say, hey, why did Z crash? And it ends up being that something that you expected to have happen or some set of conditions uh, wasn't true. So you wrote your, your, your Zeke script, and now after it's been running for long enough, some you, you, you've entered some state that you hadn't thought about because you hadn't had a chance to test it. So uh, sometimes this whole workflow can kind of feel like this. Let's, let's ship it. Let's deliver it. Oh, wait, no, no, we probably shouldn't. So how do we make this better? Uh, the answer is, of course, testing. Now, there are a lot of different types of testing that we need to think about. The first uh, that we're going to talk about today is unit testing. Unit testing is low level. It's close to the code. We're going to test individual pieces of our, our, our solution functions, uh, very small components. Then you have integration testing, which is usually two components that are working together. Uh, not, you, you can do this in a unit testing fashion. We're not going to really talk about this today. And then finally, you have end-to-end -end testing. Now, this is making sure that your code or system works from start to finish. Most Zeek testing that's done with B tests is actually an end-to-end -end test. You might be testing a small piece of functionality, but in reality, you're doing that by feeding a packet capture file. So you're not only testing that your Zeek functionality works, you're testing that Zeek can read a PCAP file. It can process the packets. It can analyze the, the protocols it needs to analyze. It can reassemble sessions if need be. It can deliver those packets at, at, or trigger events that you can handle those events. There's so many things that you're testing in that process beyond just your small piece of code. So let's focus on unit testing today because I think this is where we can solve a lot of problems. So with unit testing, and this is if you Google unit testing, you could read for days and days and days. Uh, we're going to try to test the code as close to the code as possible. Um, you should run very fast. The idea is that your unit tests test very small features or small independent parts of the code. If I want to check if a change I've made to a file is affecting any of my tests, I can run all of them and they should finish in seconds. Uh, and they shouldn't depend on external things like PCAP files because uh, we're just testing what we need to test. Uh, nothing more, nothing less. So to help with this, I'd like to introduce Z-Test. Um, because we need to prefix everything with Z because it's Zeek, and I wanted you to get really confused as to whether I'm saying B-test or Z-test. Uh, so Z-test is a simple test case uh, suite and assertion framework. Uh, it is written in Zeek for Zeek. Uh, you will look, though, if, uh, you, if you're, uh, you got a keen eye that there is some Ruby in here. I do have unit tests for Z-test, and there is a Ruby wrapper to run them. Uh, it was a little easier than running them in Zeek itself. Uh, it is based on Ruby's mini test. So I'm an avid Ruby enthusiast. And uh, mini test is one of many test frameworks for Ruby. It's very simple. So uh, when I was looking at Zeek and trying to think about ways to structure unit tests, mini test made sense. And I think that you'll find it uh, nice as well. Uh, it is available on GitHub. It's open source. So I invite you to go visit uh, the, the GitHub link. There's plenty of documentation there for it. And you'll be able to read over the code. Uh, I'll post that GitHub link in uh, the Slack channel for my talk as well when we're done. And you can install it using ZKG. So here is an example of what a unit test would look like in ZKG and really what a unit test looks like overall. So the, the unit tests are organized into test suites. And these are, if I'm testing a particular detector, uh, that might be an entirety of a suite. Uh, and then you have test cases like this example test or another example test. Test cases are ways to group together these things called assertions. Uh, assertions are things that we believe should happen or, or should be true based on what we expect our code to do, not necessarily what it does today. So when you write assertions, you're basing assertions on features that you desire the code to, do, to, to have or ways that it should work. And then you test to make sure that what you expect is what actually happens. 
So you can see that there are plenty of assertion helpers that help you have expressive, almost sentence-like structures for your test. So we might assert that two things are equal. We might assert that something is of a certain type, matches a certain regular expression. We have lots of assertions that go greater than, less than, in between some values. So it's ways to run some code, examine the output, and then say whether or not it's within what you or it's what you expected it to be. So that's an example unit test. Let's talk about what this would look like for real. So I will now show you a purposely complex example that is absolutely meaningless, but it illustrates the point pretty well. So let's build a detector to alert on connections based on the following conditions. Now, like I said, completely contrived. Uh, so hopefully uh, the, the contrived example still makes sense. Let's say that for some, for whatever reason, we've received uh, behavioral indicators that anything matching these things is bad and we wanna raise notices about them. So we're gonna look at three parts of a connection, the ridge bytes, the response bytes, and the ridge host. We're gonna write a detector that essentially alerts if, any, if all of these conditions are true each row. So less than 10 bytes, greater than ridge bytes, greater than 100 response bytes, and in this uh, slash eight of 1.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0. Um, and then, so that's one thing that we wanna alert on. Another one would be if the ridge bytes is greater than 100 and the response bytes is less than 10. And now the ridge host is 2.0.0.0 slash eight. Uh, and then any ridge bytes or response bytes from this slash eight, we wanna alert on. And then specifically, we know that 1.1.1.1 is a false positive. So we never wanna alert on that. So taking a moment to think about these conditions. So first of all, it's gonna be some pretty straightforward if else conditions, as you can imagine, but think about what it would look like to test this. In, in our contrived example, we have behavioral indicators that we've been given by somebody. We don't have necessarily packet capture files that have all these things. So think about all the different conditions and let's take a look at an example of how I might write this code. So this is a somewhat hard to test example uh, for a few reasons. So if we take a look, we're gonna, and I'm not gonna go through every line of the code here. Uh, I, I do believe it works. But uh, the, the point is that we are gonna handle the connection state remove event because we want connections. Then we're gonna look through and test every one of our conditions we talked about, less than 10 for a ridge size, greater than 100 for response, and in this slash eight, we should alert, and so on and so forth. And then down here, I've got, you know, let's weed out the false positive. And then if we should alert, we'll raise a notice. So how would we test this today without a good, maybe concept of unit testing. Well, we'd probably have to generate some traffic using uh, a scapy or something and uh, stuff it into PCAP, maybe put together a B test that has the baseline set for my notices that I'd expect. Uh, in any case, the work that you're going to do to test this might be very large for, for what you're trying to build. Or even worse, maybe you just take this code and you make sure that it actually executes in Zeek and then you you ship it uh, and, and hopefully it works, which doesn't really help you if perhaps maybe one of these greater thans was supposed to have been a less than, uh, you end up with conditions that maybe you never can hit. So first to talk about testing, let's refactor this. Um, a big part of unit testing is testing, writing code that is easy to test. So in this case, the event is hard to test. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but so I've, I've uh, refactored the code and I've extracted a method called should alert that takes in just the key parts of the connection that I care about in order to decide whether I should alert on it. Otherwise, the code is the same. So I've just extracted this method out and then I'm calling it in this if conditional inside of the event, uh, event handler. So we've created a pure function, a function without side effects. Uh, that's really nice for testing. It takes in some parameters and it returns some value that we can observe, we can, we can assert against. If I give these inputs, I expect this output. So it's a pure function. It'll always give me the same output, the same inputs, great code, easy to test. So how are we going to test it? Well, let's take a look. What would the Z test look like for this? Now, if you've never seen a unit test before, this might look like a lot. And I know that I'm almost out of time, but I wanna walk through what this looks like and why we would do these things. So first of all, um, and we'll talk about it in a second, this is actually designed to run in a B test. And we'll talk about that because uh, Z test does not replace B test. Uh, it can actually be run from B test. <clears throat> so I have a test suite, which is my bad IP notices tests. And then I have a test case, which is testing the should alert function. 
So the first thing that I do is I have my positive tests. These are tests that should alert. So I'm gonna assert, which is just basically saying that something is true, that I should alert given these inputs. Now, if we, if we look back at our, our table of inputs, we would notice that uh, these, these inputs here should alert. So essentially what this is saying is, I'm gonna assert that I should alert given these inputs. And if that assertion fails, if it is not true when it should be, this is the error message. So when you start looking at test, tests, especially mini test style or now Z test, um, this message will always be in a negative saying that it didn't alert when it was supposed to. So I have my assertions for things that should alert. And then, that, then I have some negative tests as well to make sure that my code doesn't alert when it shouldn't. So like in this case, you can see the ridge bytes needed to be less than, well, let's take a look, less than 10. And what we've done is we've made them 100. So we shouldn't alert now. Uh, and then the same thing with response bytes. And we go through all the different cases. And then finally, we have that negative test for our 1.1.1.1, which is our known false positive. So this test suite now covers every branch of what we expect. There was one thing I wanted to point out. We also do test the edge cases. Notice that we said less than and greater than, not less than or equal to and greater than or equal to. We can test that as well. So we make sure that our edge cases, we got our logic right. Uh, so this test now covers all of our code branches and allows us to test our logic without having a packet capture file. Uh, and what's really neat is that you can see here the success versus failure on, the, on this top right here. This is a successful run. We can see that we have 10 successful assertions. Uh, if I, I went through them into the code and I removed the false positive uh, check, and then you can see what happens. Uh, and I have a spelling error, but that's okay. So assert failed, alerted when shouldn't have, IP was 1.1.1.1. You can see that we expected the condition to be true. It was actually false and we have failed. If I integrate this into B test, that will have caused Zeek to have a non-zero exit code. B test will fail and my output in the standard out will include that nice message to tell me exactly which test has failed. So Z test is designed to be invoked via B test or outside of it, depending on your workflow. There are some pitfalls and problems with uh, unit testing Zeek. Testing event-driven systems is hard without refactoring. So if you already have a large code base, there's some refactoring that might have to be uh, done. Also, function testing is easy, but Zeek is kind of slow to call functions. That's why I'm very excited about Vern's work. Uh, to, to make function calls not incur a cost that, uh, that so we can write code that's testable without having to worry about the performance that, that, uh, that the performance impact that might have. Uh, and then things that are in Zeek are often log or notice driven. There's still some things about trying to test that. Like if you wanna make sure that a notice is raised, uh, that's a little bit harder. It is okay to still test things like that with B tests. So end to end tests are okay to still test. Um, and then there's some errors when you talk about synthesizing events. Um, that being said, as my final kind of way forward, I want to keep improving this. I want to make Z-Test a thing that we think about when we write Zeek scripts, because Zeek scripts are running to protect your environment. They're very important. They're just as important as your business code. So we should be testing them more. I, I have a couple of things on here that you can check out that I'd like to add to this. But really, if you think this is interesting and you want something to help contribute to, I invite you to contribute to Z-Test. Eventually, I will work to try to get this into the Zeek code base so that you just know that it's there. You're going you're to have access to it and you can write unit tests right away. Um, key takeaway, unit tests are important. You want to make sure that your code works the way that you expect it. Don't wait for your scripts to fail in production. Um, make sure that they fail when you're writing them, you'll get faster feedback. With that, I thank you all for listening to my talk. Uh, definitely reach out in the Slack channel if you have any questions and I look forward to hearing more from you.